calligraphers were given precise rules for how they should write letters from the medieval period, and particularly with respect to how they copy Qur'ans. The interesting thing was how you should write a certain ligature, for example, in one brush stroke, how the size of a ligature was related, say, to the proportions of the eye, the eye which is seeing it, how the dots, the noktas, related to the ligatures and so forth. So there's elements of proportion which were very mathematical and very precise which are laid down. And the idea was that you could produce something which is beautiful using these rules. The way the letters were used, even though they may not seem as decorative right at the beginning, in between the 8th to 10th centuries, even then there was a very specific geometry used and there was a real harmony in the way that the letters were fitted to the page and the way that uh, certain letters were elongated so that each line the margins would be even on both sides and they'd be justified. As Islam spread, the art of calligraphy developed, reaching its peak among other places, here in Turkey, under the Ottoman Empire. Calligraphy is also integral to the decoration of the world's great mosques. The words come from the Qur'an or are names of the Prophet Muhammad. Alongside calligraphy, the exquisite precision of traditional Islamic design seen in arabesque and geometric patterns has maintained its appeal in contemporary design studios. It's a language of symmetry which was first developed by the Greeks but then extrapolated and developed upon within the Islamic tradition. So often what you will see is an underlying geometric pattern which you might find in Euclid. And then on top of that, you will find the Muslim craftsmen would uh, elaborate more complex geometric designs which would appear on top of that grid. Um, and then they would hide the underlying grid. The idea is that these patterns are, they're there to engender a contemplative state. And the repetitions that one sees within Islami patterns and geometric patterns allow the mind to think upon the repetition of pattern within nature and the idea of the infinite weave and the infinite movement and repetition of form and that one sees within the natural world. So this is an example of Islimi or arabesque and to complete a composition like this you'd start off with the geometry that's the structure so you'll draw your square and then inside this square is a dynamic square here and then that houses these linear shapes which we call kapala and they're the structural shapes. So you have four of those here, here, and here. And then you have overlaid four spirals. And they're the, they're the structural lines. Once you have those, you can add the motifs. And this, this particular motif is called a Rumi motif. It's not named after the poet. Both the poet and the motif are named after the city, Rum, or Asiatic Rome, which is in Anatolia, the capital of Anatolia and the original examples of this in Seljuk uh, carvings of birds and animals. And as they um, adopted Islam, they lost the representation and, uh, and it became this abstract art uh, motif. It's often said that Islamic art is like a meditation upon the invisible. So you can see that there's, as well as structural principles here, there's a symbolic language in operation also the fundamental link between proportion and beauty. That's at the heart of it, the principle of Islamic aesthetics. Exactly the same notion of proportion uh, between different shapes, between uh, the horizontal and the vertical, between the different dimensions. Everything is quite precise. Of course, sometimes they get things slightly wrong. Um, and certainly the, the traditional argument is that if the proportion is slightly off, then you can 
through your aesthetic sense, notice it's wrong. But uh, the fundamental thing was if you got the proportions right, you would produce a work of beauty, and that's quite important. Early Islamic art and architecture also try to depict the Quranic description of paradise, a concept of beauty on earth with gardens, flowing streams, geometric arches. There's a verse in the Quran where God says that we have taught you how to calculate. We have taught you the science of computation about the stars and the moons and the planets. We've given you the knowledge so that you can navigate your way through the seas by creating compass. All of these indicate to one particular uh, uh, science. That's called mathematics. And if you look at Islamic history, the garden, the mosque, the minaret, the mihrab, the pulpit, every part of an Islamic architectural depiction have always been geometrically perfect. The way the ventilations have been designed, they're all geometrically perfect, always correlating with one another, often depicting the five pillars of Islam, or often depicting the uh, articles of faith, depicting the heavenly presence, depicting the gardens of paradise, the water, the fruit, the palm tree. All of these are geometrically put in and inspired by the very notion of maths from the Quran itself.